Claude de Ruter has finally found her. The legendary Wind Rider. The prize mutant that had eluded both his father and grandfather. He had spent his days hunting mutants for the South African Bureau of State Security, but for Claude, this was personal. And some teenage boy was not about to separate him from fortune and redemption. Claude takes aim and tells the boy to be gone while he still can. The boy does not move. Instead, he challenges Deruta to drop his weapon and fights like a man. Deruta accepts his challenge. Aurora, still intoxicated from the tranquilizer dot that Deruta had shot into her back, watches the boy fight. Through the dizziness, she can tell the boy is skinned. He moves like a panther, graceful and powerful. Aurora prays to stay awake. She is compelled to watch him. And she can see that this is no mere teenaged boy. This is a warrior. The boy knocks the router unconscious. He approaches Aurora slowly, removes the dart, and lifts her into his arms. She tells him her name is Aurora, and he tells her his name is T'Challa. She manages to whisper thank you as she finally loses consciousness. T'Challa says to her, beautiful wind rider, you are welcome. He studies her face and her skin, and he is smitten. He thinks a moment about what he had just witnessed. Was this the girl that summoned fog in the village? Was the lightning responding to her? And did she just flower? He tries to find safety for he and Aurora. But her urchin brothers have arrived to come to the rescue of their most beloved sister and they are not happy to find her in the arms of a stranger. Once they learn it was the Chala that saved Aurora and Zinja, the urchins lead him back to their village upon a high hill and they tell teacher of his fearlessness and combat skills. As they move the girls into the infirmary, Teacher asks T'Challa if he allowed the children to kill the men that attacked him. T'Challa says no, that it was not necessary, and that in war, leaving one survivor to tell the tale is vital to spreading fear amongst your enemies. Teacher sternly disagrees. Always kill your enemy, he grumbles, and kill the children. That is how you killed the snake because children grow up to become your enemies renewed. T'Challa says where he is from, they teach honor and dignity. Teacher, noticing his ragged tribal garments, asks T'Challa where is he from exactly. T'Challa tells him Wakanda, and his father was the great king T'Chaka and teacher is surprisingly in awe. He says that it is an honor that his majesty is in his village of lowly orphans and thieves. Prince T'Challa, teacher says meekly, always kill your enemy. T'Challa explains that he is on his walkabout, his journey and rites of passage into manhood, and while in the village, he overheard Zinja challenge Aurora to steal a camera from the poacher and Aurora was almost killed for it. Teacher says that Aurora is different. She is special to him and to the gods in ways he himself cannot understand. T'Challa thinks to himself. He recalls seeing Aurora summon fog and escape in the village and seeing her fly to escape the poachers in the forest, but he does not say a word. Instead, he asks if Aurora is also Teacher's daughter. 
Teacher says that he wishes that Aurora was his daughter, but she is not. Like all the children in his care besides Zinja, she too is an orphan and a former student of his old friend in Cairo. And according to Aurora, the daughter of a Kenyan princess that was killed many years ago. T'Challa requests that he stay and watch over Aurora until she recovers and teacher gives his approval. Word spreads quickly through the village that the Prince of Wakanda was in the infirmary and the children begin to sing T'Challa's name. The singing awakens Aurora and T'Challa is relieved. Meanwhile in the woods, a now conscious Claude de Ruta is heading back to his truck and he is furious. He will not be denied of the Wind Rider. He will capture the legend, redeem his family name, and make a fortune. He calls his older brother, Andreas de Ruta, and he tells him of the fight with the teenage boy. He demands that Andreas come with guns and helicopters to East Africa, and that he has finally found the Wind Rider. Some time ago, 400 pound Andreas the Bull de Ruta was also a member of the South African Bureau of State Security. On one mission, the Bull was instructed to capture Prince T'Challa so that his masters could brainwash him in order to blackmail King T'Chaka and gain control of Wakanda's vibranium, a rare, extremely versatile metal that is exclusive to Wakanda. But as soon as the ball arrived on the outskirts of Wakanda, King T'Chaka personally met him at the borders and refused him entry. Andreas offered him a fortune in exchange for vibranium. T'Chaka spat in his face. The altercation that followed was brief and T'Challa bore witness as his father, the king, commanded the bull to leave or be buried where he had been defeated. And since that day, the bull has yearned for vengeance against Wakanda, T'Chaka and T'Challa. <laughs>